to my channel and welcome if you are new here. It is another WW meal prep and boy oh boy do I have three absolutely delicious on plan recipes for you. I have a breakfast, a lunch, and a dessert. A WW friendly dessert just in time for all of those Christmas goodies to come our way. So if you want to see what I have in store for you for this week's meal prep, just keep watching. <music> For my breakfast this week, I'm going to be making a chunky monkey breakfast bake. Now I changed the recipe up a little bit and I'm going to bake this in one dish. You can also make this in individual servings, so super versatile recipe. So let me show you what is in our chunky monkey breakfast bake. First you're going to need some oats, some rolled oats. You can even use quick cook, whatever you have on hand. Almond milk, sugar-free syrup, flour. PB2 or almond PB2, again, whatever you have on hand. The recipe calls for oat bran, but I could not find it, so I'm gonna be substituting wheat bran. Chocolate chips, I'm gonna be doing the Bake Believe Semi-Sweet. Vanilla extract, baking powder, and bananas. So let's get started on this week's breakfast. So to get started on our Chunky Monkey Bake, we're gonna go ahead and add one quarter cup of rolled oats to a bowl. We're also going to add in our oat bran, and this is 10 tablespoons total. So I am five timesing the recipe to make five servings. So everything in the original recipe is times five. So I'm also going to be doing some baking powder. So this is one and a quarter teaspoons total of baking powder. And again, I have flour, 10 tablespoons, five times the original recipe. And then we're gonna add in just a pinch of salt to just bring out all those flavors. Give this a quick stir together. And we're gonna go ahead and set this aside while we put together the wet ingredients. So we're gonna start with our bananas and we want two and a half ripe bananas. And we're just gonna go ahead and put those into a bowl here. And then we're gonna use a fork and just mash them up. A little bit of chunks is okay, but you wanna try to get them as mashed up as you can. Once your banana is nice and mashed together, we're gonna go ahead and add in one and a quarter cups of our almond milk. And we're kinda gonna give this a stir as we go. This is the liquid portion of our bake. So we wanna make sure that everything is nice and mixed together. We're going to be adding in about two teaspoons of vanilla extract and that's five times that recipe as well. And then lastly, we're gonna be adding in our maple syrup and we want about one and a half tablespoons of maple syrup. And then again, we're gonna give this a quick mix together and we'll be ready to mix everything together and get ready to get our bake into the oven. So the last step is we're gonna go ahead and combine our dry ingredients, our oats and oat bran, in with our wet ingredients. And we're just gonna give that a good mix. We wanna make sure that we're creating a batter and that's what's gonna go into our baking dish. So if you were doing these as individual servings, you would have to prepare each ramekin worth of the mix together and then pour it into the ramekin and repeat. So I thought this was just a little bit easier and then I'll just cut it into the number of servings that I'm making. So whatever you prefer, you can do individual little ramekins or you can do it in a big bake pan kind of like I'm gonna do. So once you get your batter, you're gonna go ahead and fold in your chocolate chips. So I have five tablespoons, which I weighed out on my food scale of the Bake Believe chocolate chips. So we're gonna go ahead and add those into our mix and then it's ready to go into the pan. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray my pan with some nonstick cooking spray. We don't want any of this to stick. And then we're gonna go ahead and just add in our batter and our oven is preheating to 350 degrees. And we're just gonna let this cook until it is cooked through. And in the meantime, we're going to make a banana nut sauce that's gonna go on top. So how good does that sound? So you don't need any other type of sauce. We're gonna make one that's gonna go right on top of this chunky monkey bake. So there it is. We're going to put it in the oven at 350. So for the sauce for our Chunky Monkey Bake, I have my small bowl again. I'm going to go ahead and add in two and a half additional bananas. You want to have half of a banana per serving, basically. So I'm going to go ahead and add in two and a half. 
and then we're gonna get those mashed up again before we add in our PB2 and our almond milk. And this is going to make a sauce to go right on top of our bake. So once you have your bananas mashed up, it's okay to have chunks again. We're gonna go ahead and add in our PB2. And then we're gonna mix that up. And in order to make it into a sauce, we're gonna use some almond milk. So you're just going to add in as much as you need to break down that PB2 into more of a liquid. And just keep stirring, keep adding almond milk until you have a nice sauce consistency. And then this will just get drizzled right on top of our bake when it comes out of the oven. And this smells really good with that banana and that peanut butter, yum. So. Let's mix and get this ready to go on top of that bake. Our chunky monkey bake is out of the oven. It smells so good, looks delicious. I'm gonna let it cool a bit, and then we're gonna go ahead and add on that sauce and top it with a few more chocolate chips, get it packaged up for meal prep, and I'll be back to show you the smart points once we add on our sauce. Once your bake's cooled, you're going to go ahead and take that sauce and we're just going to put it right on top. Yum. Look at this. And it's going to kind of seep down the side and really just kind of coat that breakfast bake. And then once we've added our sauce on top, we're going to take just a few chocolate chips, not enough to add any extra points. And we're just going to go ahead and sprinkle those on top. I'm going to wrap this with some saran wrap and throw it in the fridge. I just want the sauce to set a little bit onto the bake and then we'll get this cut up into meal prep containers and I'll show you what I'm having for breakfast for the week and give you the smart points. Jingle bells ring in my ear. Jingle bell sound. All right, so here is my completed breakfast. So our bake made 5 servings. So this is a huge serving. Look at this. Fills the entire large part of the meal prep container. This looks so good. The bake itself is solid and then you add that sauce on top. Oh, I'm so excited for this. So we're gonna have that banana, chocolatey, peanut buttery goodness. So one fifth of the recipe or one serving, if you did individual ramekins, is six smart points. That's it. So not bad for an oatmeal bake full of chocolate chips and peanut butter. And then I'm just going to pair mine with some raspberries for zero. So this is going to be a six smart point breakfast. For lunches this week, I'm gonna be making a meatball parm bake. I'm excited about this. I've been wanting meatballs and this just sounds so delicious. So let me show you what is in this recipe. First, you're going to need marinara sauce. I always use the skinniest dish crock pot marinara. It is zero smart points no matter how much you use. I will link the recipe down in the description box with the other recipes. Highly recommend it. It's delicious. And again, zero smart points on all plans. Also some minced garlic, milk of your choice, salt and pepper and Italian seasoning, eggs, Parmesan cheese. The recipe calls for Asiago cheese as well. I couldn't find that, so I'm just gonna use Parmesan cheese. And I have one pound of 96.4 extra lean ground beef. The recipe calls for a couple other meats. I'm modifying a little bit because I don't need that much. I'm only making four servings. So I opted for the one pound of 96.4. Fat-free cheese, breadcrumbs of your choice. I always use the herb seasoned stuffing mix from Pepperidge Farms. I think it makes a way better meatball fresh basil and fresh parsley. So let's get started on our lunches. So the first step for our meatball bake is we're gonna go ahead and take half of a cup of breadcrumbs or stuffing mix, whatever you're using, and then also half of a cup of milk of your choice. And we're just going to mix these together. It'll allow those breadcrumbs to soak up that milk. And we're just gonna set this aside while we put together the meat. So we're ready to put together the meat mixture. So I have my one pound of 96.4 extra lean ground beef. To that, I'm going to add in that breadcrumb mixture. It's soaked up most of the milk. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. And basically these are what is gonna form our meatballs. So that mixture. And then in my bowl here, I have fresh parsley and fresh basil. I'm actually gonna add basil directly into my meatballs because I love basil, so that'll be a nice touch. And then I'm also going to be adding some Italian seasoning. We're also going to add in two eggs. I just cracked them separately to avoid the shell. We're also going to add in our minced garlic. We want about 
six cloves ish of garlic and then half of a cup of fresh Parmesan cheese and lastly some salt and some pepper and we're gonna give this a good mix until it's nice and combined and then we'll be ready to roll it into our meatballs So I took a six by nine baking dish, lined it with some aluminum foil, sprayed it with some non-stick cooking spray, and then I have just a cookie scoop. I purchased these off of Amazon. It came in a three pack, three different sizes, really inexpensive, about $10. They are linked in my Amazon store under kitchen gadgets, and that link is in the description box. So I'm just going to take that, and that is what is going to form my meatball, and I'm just going to pop it into my pan. And I'm gonna do that until I am completely out of meat mixture. And then we'll be ready to get these into the oven. So our meatballs are gonna go in our oven at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes or until they are cooked through. So I just took the meatballs out of the oven. They're just about all the way cooked through. I did drain any of the liquid that was in the bottom. So now we're gonna take our jar of our skinniest dish marinara, and we're gonna go ahead and add it directly to the top of our meatballs. You can remove the meatballs first, but I'm just gonna add it to the top, only because the meatballs are already spaced apart enough. We're a little frozen still. So I'm gonna get this broken up and I'll, we'll be back to top it with some cheese and some Italian seasoning. Once you've put your marinara sauce on there, you're gonna take your cup of fat-free cheese and you're just going to sprinkle it right on top of your meatballs. You just wanna make sure that they're all fully covered with your cheese. And then the last step before this goes back into the oven, well, the second to the last step, is we're gonna go ahead and drizzle just the tiniest bit of avocado oil or olive oil, whatever you have on hand, over the top of the cheese. So that's what I have here. So literally just the tiniest amount we're just going to give it a quick drizzle right over the top of the cheese and then we're going to cover this in foil and it's going to go back into the oven for about 20 additional minutes so i just pulled the meatballs out of the oven they look so good it smells amazing in here so i have the little bit of fresh parsley that's left over from what i put into the meatballs so i'm going to go ahead and just kind of sprinkle that on top and then on top we're also going to go ahead and add the Italian seasoning. And then we're gonna get this divided out into our meal prep containers. This entire pan only makes four servings. So it's going to be quite a lot. I'm just going to pair it with a vegetable. So let's get this packaged up. I'll be back to show you my lunch and give you the smart points. So here is my lunch for this week. I ended up making four lunches only because I don't need a lunch on Christmas day. So this will make it through the week. This looks so delicious. So what we have here is we have four of the meatballs just about four really like one and three quarters i had to divide it into four equal servings so basically three and three quarter meatballs with the sauce and the cheese so delicious and i went ahead and just paired it with some brussels sprouts it's actually the frozen brussels sprouts from trader joe's they're my very favorite i throw them in my meal prep container frozen i warm them up add a little spray butter salt and pepper so this looks really good. So for three and a half or three and three quarters of the meatballs, it is six smart points. And of course my veggies are zero. So this is going to be a six smart point lunch. I may pair this with something for dessert, like some mini meringues from Trader Joe's or something like that. But as of right now, my lunch is a total of six smart points. For dessert this week, something to help stay on track during the crazy holidays, I'm gonna be making WW Pound Droppers Apple Crisp. And I'm very excited about this. I love any kind of crisp. It's actually my very, very favorite dessert. So I'm excited to have this on hand, something that's low point, but still delicious. So let me show you what you're going to need for Apple Crisp. You're going to need some Granny Smith apples, oats. You could probably get away with quick cook oats, but I'm just gonna use rolled oats flour, brown sugar sweetener alternative of your choice. I'm gonna be using the Lakanto Monk Fruit Sweetener Golden. You can buy this on the Nutrition website. That link is down in the description box below. Along with all of the other monk fruits, that's where you buy Fiber Gourmet, the honey, all the things. So definitely check it out in the description box. Light butter. I'm actually going to sub the Dax Pumpkin Spice in lieu of the nutmeg and cinnamon and all those other flavors because this is so delicious and it has all of those flavors that the recipe calls for 
all rolled into one. And what's great about Dax, it is no salt, all natural, no MSG, fabulous before weigh-in, fabulous if you're watching your salt, tastes really good, and the ingredients are seriously amazing. So all that's in here is cinnamon, spices, and honey. So the honey just adds that little extra bit of deliciousness to this seasoning. So I'm gonna use this in place of the nutmeg and the cinnamon, but I am going to go ahead and add a little extra cinnamon just because I love it. If you wanna pick up Dax, there's a link down in the description box. It'll give you 10% off and free shipping. They have over 20 seasonings. I love them. I have all of them. You know if you watch my channel, I use them a lot. So highly recommend Dax for all of your seasonings. No salt, really, really good, especially the day before weigh-in. We are going to add a little bit of salt to enhance some of the flavors. Baking powder, cornstarch, one and a half cups of water, and lastly, some lemon juice. So let's get started on our apple crisp. So the first thing that we need to do is get these apples chopped. So I am going to peel them and chop them into small pieces. They're gonna go here in this bowl. We want about six apples or so. I'm just gonna gauge it on the amount of apples that I have here in my bowl. I may do this whole bag. I'm just gonna kind of see how much it produces. So let's get peeling and chopping. Jingle bells ringing in my ear Jingle bell a sound that's oh so dear Frosty the snowman is all around town Watch out for rain, these are falling down We stay up waiting for Santa tonight He climbs down the chimney at the speed of light While we're... That was a lot of cutting. So once your apples are peeled and chopped, we're gonna go ahead and just Add a little bit of lemon juice, about a teaspoon to two teaspoons. And then we're just going to mix it all together. We just wanna go ahead and coat those apples in the lemon juice, it'll kinda of start absorbing that. Then we're gonna grab out another bowl and get started on the rest of our cobbler. So now we're gonna to get together the base of our crisp. So I have one half of a cup of flour. We're also going to add one half of a cup of our rolled oats. I have one half of a cup of my brown sugar alternative. We're going to add in just a little bit of salt. And that just kind of helps enhance all of those flavors. Man, I am like butters today dropping things. And then we're gonna add in a little bit of cinnamon. That always just makes the apple crisp perfect. And then lastly, we have our baking powder here and we're gonna go ahead and add in one teaspoon of baking powder. Then I'm just gonna use my teaspoon here and just give this a quick stir. You just wanna make sure everything gets nice and combined. Once that's mixed together, you're gonna go ahead and cut in about three tablespoons of light butter. And then we're actually going to throw this into the refrigerator for about 10 minutes because we want that butter to kind of get hardened. And that's really going to just help with the crumble on top of our apples. So now once this is in the refrigerator for about 10 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and start making the filling or the sauce for the apple crisp. So while that crumble mix is in the fridge, we're gonna make some sauce to go over our apples. So I have one and a half cups of water. So we're gonna add that to just a small saucepan. I'm also going to add three quarters of a cup of the monk fruit golden, so the brown sugar alternative. I have a couple tablespoons here of cornstarch. That's just going to help really thicken up the sauce. We're gonna do just a tiny bit of salt, and then I'm gonna add in just that little bit of extra cinnamon for that little pop of flavor. And then lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the best part, which is the Dax pumpkin pie, and I'm going to generously add that in. We're gonna go ahead and get this on the stove, allow it to come to a boil, and just continue to whisk until it thickens. Once your sauce has thickened, look at that, yum. It's thick like caramel. We're gonna go ahead and pour it directly over our apples. Oh my goodness, this looks so good. It smells so cinnamony and spicy, but yet sweet from that brown sugar, so oh, yum. So then we're gonna go ahead and just mix our apples 
combine them really well with that sauce. Oh, this looks so delicious. Get that nice and mixed together, and then we're gonna put this into a prepared baking dish, add our crumble, and get this into the oven. I did preheat my oven to 375 degrees. All right, everything is mixed together, so we're gonna put this here into our baking dish. I did spray it, of course, with some non-stick cooking spray. Then we're gonna go ahead and pull that crumble out of the fridge and add it directly to the top. All right, look at that. That looks delicious. And then we're gonna add that crumble. I just pulled it out of the fridge so it's nice and cold. And we're just going to sprinkle it right over the top here of our apples. Just make sure you get a little crumb goodness on every corner here. And then this is going to go into the oven again at 375. We want to cook it until our apples are boiling because we wanna make, or bubbly I should say, because we wanna make sure that our apples are cooked completely through. So we'll get this spread out. We'll get this into the oven 15 to 18 minutes or so. Just keep an eye on the corners. When you see those apples bubbling, you know that your crisp is done. So here is our WW Pound Dropper Apple Crisp. You guys look at this. This sauce is cinnamony and thick like caramel. Smells so good. So I'm gonna let this cool for a little bit. I'm actually not going to plate it up because we're gonna have it for dessert tonight and then throughout the week, but I'm gonna give you the point. So you can have a half of a cup serving and this pan, and you guys, this is full, is six servings. So it's approximately a half of a cup or six equal servings. I'll go ahead and give you the points for all the plans. It is three smart points on both green and and blue and those of you on purple it is only two smart points so what an absolutely delicious dessert let me show you too a couple of things that you can add to the top of this to kind of jazz it up and sweeten it up even more so the first thing you could top your crisp with is some fat free ready whip you can have up to five tablespoons for zero points so that's kind of a nice thing to add to the top or you can go ahead and add some of the smucker sunday syrup this is the caramel. It depends on how much you use. I'll put the points here on the screen for a serving. Uh, two tablespoons is a serving, and I want to say it's three points, but it'll be here on the screen. So you could drizzle some of this caramel over the top. So you have some options if you did want to add a little topping, but this looks absolutely delicious. So you can't beat it for two to three smart points, depending on the plan that you're on. So here are my snacks for the week. So first let's start with the Smashmallows. I am going to have one of these as my dessert with lunch. This candy cane one is so good. Here's what they look like. They are a pepperminty marshmallow coated with like a candy coating. They are only one smart point a piece. So really, really low points. Kind of cures that sweet tooth. Gluten free. They're made with real ingredients. They're really, really delicious. So that's going to be my dessert with lunch. And then of course my morning snack as always is going to be a built bar i'll just change up my flavor throughout the days but i just pulled out a black cherry chocolate cream definitely check out built bar there are only three smart points on any plan with the exception of the peanut butter it is four smart points just because it is made with organic peanut butter and does have little chunks of peanuts throughout so it is a point more well worth it my friends well worth it so built bars three smart points there's your nutritional information these taste like a candy bar they do not taste like a protein bar i mean legit candy bar and three points you can't beat it coated in chocolate really delicious i do have a 10 percent off discount code for built bar it is here on the screen and that will also give you 10 percent or I'm sorry, 10% off and free shipping. And down in the description box is a link. If you click the link, it'll automatically take you to Built Bar and automatically apply the 10% in free shipping. So it just kind of saves you a step, but highly recommend. I eat one every day. It's what keeps me full between breakfast and lunch and kind of cures that sweet tooth. So check out Built Bar. And then I'm gonna have a little itty bitty pretzel snack. These are delicious. I love these. You can have 53 of these little pretzels for four smart points. So that is a great deal. They are small. I don't know, it's kind of hard to see them. I mean, they're small, but you can have 53 of them for four points. So I like to have these just as that crunchy, salty snack in the afternoon. So I'm gonna be having those. So those are my snacks for the week. Definitely head on over and check out Built Bar. Use my code to save that 10% and get free shipping. Thank you for joining me on this week's WW Meal Prep. I do follow the green plan, so all the points are for the green plan. Now, if you're interested in the points for blue and purple, just head on over to my Facebook group, join the group, and you have access to all of the files that have all of my recipes that I've ever shared on my channel. So it is chalked 
full of hundreds of recipes and we do give you the points for blue and purple over there as well. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to welcome you. We're about to head into 2020 and I have some amazing things coming your way. So definitely hit that little subscribe button and the little bell. That way you're notified whenever I upload. Thumbs up if you love meal preps. And of course, leave those comments down below. Let me know what was your favorite recipe that I shared with you and what is the one that you absolutely have to try. I wanna wish you guys a very, very Merry Christmas. We are just a couple of days away and I hope that you enjoy spending time with your friends and family and don't focus on Weight Watchers. Focus on the people you're with during the holidays. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you and I'll see you next time.